everybody. Uh, it's been a while since the last episode in this uh, little mini-series. I started making this knife out of a plow edge when there was snow on the ground uh, last year, and uh, there's snow on the ground again, so I think it's about time we finish it. So yeah, without further ado, let's get going. So my original piece of wood from that stick just wasn't going to be big enough to comfortably shape into a handle. So I made this little block of wood out of a log that we had laying around and hopefully there's a handle somewhere in here. Alright, next step I'm going to go ahead and grind some of the tang off uh, just to give us more room in the wood to work with. I don't want to accidentally be sanding the wood and have the tang start popping through. So I'm going to just uh, thin out the tang a little bit. The time has come to burn the tang. So this is going to get smoky, so I got my uh, handy dandy windy blowy here. So as I was fitting this I noticed some splitting happening in between the grain. Uh, there's a good chance it has to do with my wood choice. This is not the hardest wood ever. Uh, I think it's a birch of some type. I don't know what I don't know wood. Alright, pardon the delay. I believe the last shot I filmed for this video was in like springtime. Uh, it's now winter of 2019. So, but for you, it's been all of 20 seconds. So, uh, let me show you where we're at at the moment. So, these three pieces, pretty much exactly where I left them. Uh, I'm gonna, I have decided I'll uh, continue the bevel grinding just a bit more before heat treat. But uh, the real snag was, of course, the handle material. Which is why I picked up the most expensive dead plant I have ever purchased. This is a $71 piece of hickory. Um, hickory has been used for handles for a long time, as I understand. It's got a really tight grain that uh, all tends to go in one direction, so it's really good for like axe handles and hammer handles. Uh, so. That'll be fun to experiment in the future. But today, of course, we'll be using it for the knife handle. Uh, it's a bit plain. It's not the most decorative of woods, but um, it'll definitely do the job, and it's quite durable. So. Alrighty, so our block of wood is now fitting flush with the bolster, and I smell like a forest fire. Guess you could say I'm a hickory smoked Todd. But this time it's not for nothing. Uh, we do have a 100% intact handle piece. 
Uh, there's no splitting along the grain like there was in the uh, last piece of wood we tried. So now it's time to drill the holes in the handle material and the tang and uh, just get ready for heat treat. <laughs> So you can see what I'm saying here, I definitely added like a second surface there. And here it's still perfectly 90 degrees, so. As you can see, I got one nasty warp right there. So I'm gonna heat it back up and uh, see if I can straighten it out and then normalize it before giving it another quench. So there is still some warping, um, but it's not that bad. I'm going to throw it in the toaster oven to get it tempered, and I think we'll just need to grind away a little extra material. Alright, next day it's out of the oven and tempered. I do believe we'll need to do some uh, serious grinding to get the uh, warps out. I have no idea what I was thinking when I ground this. I let the bevel get way too high on me. Uh, originally it was supposed to be like maybe a third up the blade, now it's easily two thirds of the way up the, towards the spine. So I'm just going to keep grinding and uh, keep in mind that, uh, was it, knife makers don't make mistakes, they make shorter knives. That's probably what's going to end up happening here. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
out the profile of the handle. I'm going to leave it like that for now. Um, and I got the pin to the right size where it now fits into the handle and retains the knife. So my next step is going to be to touch up the bolster with some sandpaper and then uh, epoxy everything together and let it set overnight. Currently negative three degrees outside, so I'm not going to be opening the garage door. I'd like to try to keep the interior of the garage a nice balmy freezing. All right, I'm done complaining. Our knife is now one piece and ready to have the handle shaped. So I'm going to lock it in the vise here and we can get started filing. So as you saw after the epoxy was done curing I uh, started rounding the corners over on the uh, belt sander and I used the contact wheel on the grinder to kind of hollow out kind of this uh, last third of the blade kind of add in like an hourglass kind of shape uh, just kind of thins it out right where your three fingers kind of grab it there. Then I also took a uh, aluminum tube there and uh, sanded a groove into both sides about where your index finger rests so that just kind of makes it feel a little more comfortable alrighty guys so we are in the home stretch there's a couple more things I need to do I'm going to finish sanding off the epoxy on a couple of places on the guard where there's still some remaining also I've already uh, sanded the side of the guard to 400 grit which is about where I'd like to keep it um, that's also the grit I've uh, sanded the handle to thus far but I still need to sand the face of the guard to 400 grit. It's currently at 120. I'm thinking I'm going to keep it at 400 grit. Uh, brass is obviously a lot softer than steel, so it'll scratch easily. So I want it to still kind of have some type of a visible grain. That way, hopefully, scratches won't show up as, uh, as easy. Then all we'll have left to do is uh, put some oil on the handle and uh, sharpen it up and see how it cuts.
and I'm going to call that a wrap. I'm very happy with how it turned out, despite not going exactly as planned. Uh, I got some more tapering towards the tip than I originally had intended. That's of course because I botched the quench with an extra thin blade that ended up warping. And because of that, I had to grind way more material off the blade during the post-quench grinding than I would have if I had just left the blade thick. So I just learned through failure and experience that, yeah, you should uh, forge thick and grind thin. That's especially important when you're heat treating a steel that you've never made a knife out of before. Case in point. So I hope you enjoyed the series. If uh, you didn't see the uh, first two, make sure to check those out. Uh, it covers the forging and uh, the process before everything in this video. So although this is the end of the uh, Plow Edge Knife series, it is not the end of uh, making sharp pointy things out of the Plow Edge. Uh, so stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.